Hey friends, you're watching a brand new Lo-Fi Let's Play with me, Lee Alexander. Today we're playing a game called Critical Mass, and uh, I was such a fan of this one when I was a child. It's full of uh, intrigue, danger, uh, possible death waiting around every corner, and uh, world travel. Um, it's interesting now, obviously, to go, uh, go back to it and find out how much is different from what I remember. Um, this was kind of a confusing universe when I was a child. Why am I taking the flowers off of my desk that we're beginning this game on? I don't know, because it's an adventure game and I can. Um, notice on the wall it says the word lithium. There's a secret password on the wall, I see. Okay, and on our desk is an envelope. Uh, let's take this. Okay, open envelope. And as you see, the time is passing. It's already 8.06. I've spent an entire six minutes lifting those items um, up off of my desk. Um, I think we'll know what the time is all about later, but let's open the envelope and have a read. Um, the following telephone message was received at 0100 hours June 1st. At precisely 8 a.m. June 5th, the five largest cities in the world will be destroyed by thermonuclear devices. This is not a request for ransom. The purpose of this warning is to create worldwide panic and thereby sweeten my revenge. The call was traced to a payphone at the Central Park Zoo, but a search yielded no clues. Fortunately, the news media are cooperating and not publicizing similar written messages. You must find a way to neutralize this threat. Your contact is in London. Wow. Well, I guess I'm, I'm a pretty serious individual. When I was a child, I used to play this game all the time because I thought I was a detective. Um, but I don't think exactly I'm a detective. Um, I might be some kind of CIA agent. Let's... Uh, but this, this game is full of many scary moments, and what I'm about to share with you here, I've never really gotten to show anybody, although it's a story that I've told frequently whenever I enter uh, high-rise elevators. Um, you need to say a secret word to go down. Hmm. Maybe our secret password. Not here. Uh, how about down? Wow, very secret. Um, this game has a lovely sense of humor. Uh, this creator did uh, a number of some of my favorite uh, titles. Whoa! The elevator is having a nervous breakdown. You are falling fast. Oh gosh, what can we do? If the elevator hits the ground, we're gonna die. We're just gonna make sure we're not on the ground when the elevator hits the ground. Oop! The elevator hits bottom at 80 miles per hour. Your shoulders and ankles trade places. You're dead. Oh my gosh. Let's just, yeah, let's start over. Wow. Um, <laughs> yeah, so when I was a child, I, I, I didn't know what to do about that scene, and I thought that, uh, I thought it was very easy to die in elevators, and to this day, whenever I'm riding an elevator up, 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 uh, in a high-rise building, I think about that scene, and it's really interesting how, uh, how games can change your lives permanently that way. Let's take our envelope just in case. Um, just want to make sure we read it. And, uh, let's, let's, let's try that again. Um, push the button. We're going to wait for the elevator to come. Our secret word is down. Uh, we're already making better time. Um, but it's amazing how, how much I, uh, I banged my head against this before I finally figured out what to do. You have to, tr tr you have to, uh, and I don't remember how I learned the right answer, but you need a well-timed jump. A perfectly timed jump allows you to avoid the worst of the crash. Um, I don't know if that would actually work if you were in a falling elevator. Uh, the idea that you should be in midair at the precise moment the falling elevator hits the ground, but uh, just in case that works, I am prepared for falling elevators, folks. You are in front of the UN building. Yeah, I guess I'm not a detective after all. Um, look, flags. I hope you have a color TV. Interesting. So if we head this way, uh, apparently we're in New York City. This looks very New York-like to me. There are some stores here, like Go Deli. The delicatessen opens at 10, so it doesn't look like we can visit there now. Uh, but I'm an important adult in an important adult world. You see, if I go here, uh, the driver says the box is misprinted. Okay, don't really know what that means, but uh, go taxi. Let's go to the zoo, the, the last known site of our... Uh, of our shadowy call from our would-be global assassin. Ah, here we are at the zoo. Um, one thing you can't hear, because again, I can't sort out uh, a way to have the audio levels in the game where you can still hear me, um, 
with the software that I'm using, they have little tunes. Uh, when you die, it plays the Death March. When you uh, when you arrive at the zoo, it plays a bloopy old McDonald's. But I don't think you're missing very much. Let's enter the zoo. It's an elephant. Oh, you know, it's nice that we can go on a tour of many different animals before we uh, go to London. Junk food for sale. Um, let's buy some peanuts. Okay, now you have some peanuts. Cool. Um, give peanuts to elephant. The elephant thanks you for the snack and gives you the broom in return. It's a very generous and engaged elephant, don't you think? Um, I don't really know uh, what we'll do with a broom, but again, it's an adventure game. Who cares? Let's continue uh, on through the zoo, shall we? You're in front of the seal pond. Um, <gasps> perhaps someone doesn't want you on this case. Oh no, take bomb. Now you have a live bomb. Throw a bomb. The bomb sinks safely in the pond. Whew. Fortunately, the seals were out to lunch. That's a relief, you know. Um, this game was sort of unique for its time in that it incorporated action timing before other similar text-only games did. Already the sequence that we had in the elevator and, and the sequence to do with the bomb. Um, I spoke to the creator of this game, actually, sort of a father figure in my childhood. I mean, I, 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 that sounds weird to say. I don't actually know him that well, but I did have a correspondence with him uh, who wrote these games that I played as a child, and he actually spoke about uh, why he did this to me, made me scared of elevators and, and threw bombs at me and, and all of these things. Um, and uh, at the end of this video, I'll let you know how you can read the correspondence that he had but with me. But let's, let's continue exploring this zoo. Here's a lion. Oh, and there's something on the floor of the lion's cage. Could that be a note? Look, cage. There is a sign on the front of the cage. This is a man-eating lion. Do not go near or reach into the cage. Oh, gosh, okay. Um, seems like a very dangerous uh, attraction for the Central Park Zoo to have. Um, look, floor of the cage. There's a piece of paper on the floor. Get paper with broom. You use the broom to get the paper. The lion, however, did eat the broom. Yeah, I remember that. I'm wondering, why would a lion eat a broom? Read paper. Pierre's Laundry, 17 Rue La Poupie, Paris, France, 7325A. I see. Um, we've just risked our lives to get a laundry receipt. Video games, everybody. Um, what do you say we uh, get out of here? Um, see a pudgy packet room. Junk food for sale. There's nothing else to do here in this area. Uh, where's that taxi? <laughs> uh, so I wonder if we should go to that, that delicatessen. Um, or maybe we should head to Paris and try to exchange the laundry receipt. I don't know, maybe we should stay on task. I mean, if I was, a, if I was an international uh, mystery-solving uh, CIA agent-type fellow, uh, I would want to make sure that... I met my contact and solved the mystery before pursuing mysterious laundry receipts that I had found at the zoo. Uh, so if the delicatessen opens at 10, why don't we wait? Try something else. What are we carrying? Some money, some flowers. A laundry receipt. Okay. Hmm. Ajax security system. Look, building. Try something else. Look, sign. Specializing in voice-actuated switches. Wow, I wonder if uh, this has anything to do with the uh, thermonuclear detonators. Clearly it looks like uh, this place is closed right now. Yeah, can't, can't seem to be interested in entering this. Um, let's just, even though it doesn't exactly what you, let you wait, it still makes time pass, so let's wait for the deli to open. Standing outside the door, it's now open. Go deli. Wow, look at this. We're in a deli. Just like I remember from New York. Look, deli. They sell food here. We're only selling soup today. Let's buy some soup. What kind? Chicken. Let's get some chicken soup. You have nothing to put it in. Can't buy a can of chicken soup? Oh, man. If only I'd taken that vase from work. Yeah, I'm very surprised uh, that uh, this deli doesn't actually even have containers for soup. 
So it looks like we waited for nothing. Um, but why don't we go to the airport? Here we are. Oh, wow, look at all these flights that are available to us. Uh, we can go to Miami at 8 in the morning. That's not really something I'm ready to do now. There is a, a flight to London at 6 o'clock and a flight to Paris at 7. So uh looks like we're going to have to go and meet our contact in London before we investigate our mysterious laundry receipt. You know, I used to imagine that, that this would be what adventures would be like as a child, uh, and, and it turns out it's true. There, there's a lot of watching signboards in airports in, in my career now, and uh, fortunately not a lot of bombs or lions. It might be more interesting if, if there were. Oops, no, I want to go to the airport. Uh, buy a ticket uh, to London. Uh, and the time automatically advances so that it's ready for my flight. I sort of, uh, I wish that would happen in real life. Uh, you know, you just buy the ticket and immediately the clock moves forward. Instead of doing that surreal thing where you shuttle through a sealed tube at 30,000 feet, your body sort of knowing the profound wrongness of being off the ground. I get emotional on planes. I watch a lot of movies, I cry a lot. Oh wow, here we are. Paris, Rome, and, du and New York are available destinations from here. We're at the London Airport. Not Heathrow Airport, but the London Airport. You were at, oh, Telex, how about this? Open door. Urgent. Reliable sources state no bombs planted. Missiles to be la- oh. Okay, well it won't be bombs, it'll be missiles, and I think they will be launched. I think it's stuck. Aha! Missiles to be launched from single site. Contact on bridge. Intercepted code word. Sneak. Uh oh. What happened? Someone clobbered you and stole all your money. Oh, wow. That's terrible. How are we going to get out of here? Maybe I should have gone somewhere else first. Uh, well, anyway, the telex has given us the interceptive code word is S-N-E something E-R. So maybe sneaker? That sounds about right. Well, I've been clobbered while I was waiting at the telex machine. This is terrible. Exit. There's a blunt instrument here. What am I holding? What have I picked up? A telescope? Wow, okay. Mm. Maybe we could use that telescope. Wow, who is this? Are we on another planet? Oh, it's a British Krishna. Okay. Hi, Krishna. The Krishna wishes you oneness with the universe. The Krishna thanks you for the flower and gives you a lot of money. Oh, I didn't really know that that was how being a Krishna worked. But, um, lucky this charitable uh, Krishna was here, and lucky that we stole the flower from our desk at work before embarking on our international adventure. You know, it's funny, I used to, any time I went someplace unusual with my family, whether that was a fancy restaurant or a fancy hotel, perhaps for a wedding or something, I, uh, I always um, used to try to open and break things, look in the phone book, tear pages out, because, you know, you never know what you might need. I was a real delight uh, to my family um, in my youth as I was preparing to be an adventurer. You were at a taxi stand outside Heathrow. Okay. Um, go. Oops. Sorry, everybody. Sometimes that can happen. Let's just make sure that we keep the video square here. You wouldn't want me to start over now, would you? Good, because me neither. You know, these are lo-fi, tactile, mistake-prone. We're at a taxi stand outside Heathrow. How about we go bridge, maybe? Come on. Go bridge. <sighs> you are at the new London Bridge. Wow. It looks brand new. Look, man. Talk, man. Say sneaker. Sneaker. Um, what should I do? Talk to man. He advises you to not come any closer. Uh, speak. Sneakers. Oh gosh, what could our password be? It's very difficult. Um, hmm. Oh, maybe it's lithium. Do you remember from our... 
thought our contact on the bridge had a different password, but let's try lithium. He says, Major Rand is in St. Thomas, and Count Stupertino was in Rome. Okay, well, well, that's interesting. Good to know. We've met our contact here in London. Um, okay, wow. Is there anything else to do here in London besides uh, get that information on the bridge? Oh, I wonder what that telex was about. Okay. I feel like I'm really out of my depth. This must be what it's like to be a secret agent. Um, again, I would be terrible about the terrible at this. Let's go to the error port. So, uh, one of them is in St. Martin and the other one is in Rome. But, uh, I kind of really want to go to Paris. I no longer even remember, uh, what's going on in Paris besides the laundry receipt. I think maybe that's where our, our sneaker contact is. Uh, it's 11-11, everybody. Make a wish. Uh, let's buy a ticket to... Hmm. You know... I, I don't know if I feel ready to go to Paris yet. Um, a little scared. Maybe go back to New York. I wonder if I missed something. What could we put that soup in? I don't know. Let's go to Rome. It's a whole day away. Probably should have gone to Paris because it was it was coming up next. But uh, let's look for whatever the major or the count or whoever that is uh, should be. Is there any telex or anything here? Um, nope, nothing to do but go to the taxi. Um, let's go to the Coliseum. That's what I want to do. Wow, it worked! This final from the sports desk. <laughs> Lions 2581, Christians 0. I see. Okay. Enter Coliseum. The Lions are on a road trip. No games today. Near the taxi stand. Ah, you were at the Villa Stupertino. That's who we were looking for. Open gate. Can't open the lock. Knock. Sneaker. <laughs> well, sneaking around outside this man's house. The Villa Stupertino, which is right beside the Colosseum. Ooh, okay, a flashlight. That could be something that we could use for later. What I'd really like is something to put soup in, wouldn't you? That's sort of what I'd like. Try some Italian pottery. Sounds, uh, sounds rough. You know, I don't feel ready to be in Rome right now. You know, we can't, can't get into the Villa Stupertino. Let's go back to the airport. We have a jet-setting lifestyle, everybody. Um, and there was no cups to buy in London. Um, let's go back to New York. Not New Torque, New York. I really just want to buy some soup, everybody. I think that's an important task. And, and, and I am cheating a little in terms of what I remember about this game as a kid. Um, and, and why the soup is important before we go to Paris. And I'm hoping I'll get to show you that today. Because it's adventure game logic, everybody. All right now, wow, we're in JFK Airport. And uh, see what else there could be. Can't go that way. No, I don't want to exit, really. Maybe... Nope. Okay. Go, UN. What else could there be to do here? I'm going to help. Try something else. Hint, please. Sorry, I can't help you now. Okay. Go, shoes. Enter, shoes. Go, shoe store. It's closed. Okay. Oh, an alley. Get bottle. Okay, maybe we could put soup in this bottle we found in an alley. Buy chicken soup. Okay. A surprise inspection by the Board of Health has forced the deli to close. What a surprise. They're pouring soup into bottles we find in the alleyway. All right, I feel ready to go to Paris, everybody. How about you? You know, imagine this game just captivating uh, a kid and deeply informing her idea of, of how the world works airport. Um, this one's quite a trip, I think. Let's go to Paris. Uh, and the time advances forward. Please stand by during disk access. Interesting. How, 
We're getting close to the end of our time together, um, our jet-setting adventure. We haven't really stopped any thermonuclear detonators, but uh, I really like this game. I think I'm going to persist with it, um, with or without you folks. What? Oh, you ran out of time. Apparently a giant mushroom cloud is now towering over us. Shouldn't have gone to Rome, I guess. We only had a few days. Wow, that's, uh, that's pretty intense, but, um, maybe, uh, instead I can tell you, uh, if you go to my website, leealexander.net, uh, you'll see a search field at the top of the page right under the header banner, and if you search for the phrase open letter, you'll see the open letter I wrote to, uh, the Bob Blauschild, who was at, uh, Sirius Software at the time that he made these games, and, um, yeah, uh, a lot of his games really frightened me and uh, entertained me and, and took up a lot of my time. And uh, the thing that really differentiated his work from uh, his contemporaries, particularly at Sierra at the time, Sierra was starting to establish uh, the adventure game. I think it, he was a contemporary of, of Roberta Williams' earliest work, like The Wizard and the Princess, maybe. Um, I think these games came out in about the same period of time, the same few year period. Uh, he said that what he tried to do to increase value for people and to increase the amount of time uh, that they'd spend playing it is, is, is to insert these tricks and to allow you to run out of time and die or you know, in his other game Escape from Rungistan which unfortunately is not playable on virtualapple.org you could hit a tree skiing which uh, was also to me a very frightening way to, to go and, and it really startled me to know that elevators could fall you could hit a tree skiing, the world could, could uh, be thermonuclearly detonated, and uh, I, a little child playing detective in my room, would never know. So it was sort of fun for me to play one of these sort of secret agents who contacted the shadowy periphery of the adult world and who went to airports and used telex machines, whatever those were. Anyway, thank you so much for uh, stopping by today and, and watching this latest lo-fi let's play. Um, look for another one next week, and uh, if you remember this game, or if you have thoughts, ideas, suggestions about Apple IIe games, if you've been playing games yourself on virtualapple.org, and especially if you yourself were a game developer during that time period, I would love to hear from you. Uh, you can reach me at lee at leealexander.net or via my Twitter at leealexander. Um, I really like to hear from people about the Let's Plays, so uh, do keep in touch and, and keep watching. Hope you guys have a wonderful weekend.